Since the Burj Khalifa opened back in 2010, claiming the title of the world's tallest skyscraper, it has sparked anticipation that it would usher in a new era of towering structures. Despite numerous projects announced to surpass its height, the Burj Khalifa still holds the record 14 years later. But that may change in the near future, since earlier this year, Saudi Arabia revealed an ambitious plan to build a skyscraper that would reach a staggering two kilometers into the sky. If completed, this colossal structure would dwarf the 828-meter-tall Burj Khalifa and double the height of Saudi Arabia's previous world record attempt, the Jeddah Tower. Details about the project are still scarce. The only confirmed information is that it's planned for the nation's capital, Riyadh, and is being designed by the renowned architecture firm Foster & Partners. There aren't even any official renders yet. The one shown here was created by us using a bit of magic in Blender. Still, the announcement has sparked global conversations, with many wondering if such a tall structure could ever really be built. And if so, how? Let's find out. Saudi Arabia is no stranger to announcing ambitious mega-projects, and this latest proposal is no exception. Some of the kingdom's most notable mega-projects include The Line, a futuristic linear city consisting of two mirrored walls stretching 170 kilometers long and 500 meters in height, and The Mukab, a massive 400-meter-tall cuboid skyscraper set to redefine the Riyadh skyline. More buzz was created when the announcement of yet another ambitious project was made. On March 4, 2024, British architectural magazine Architects Journal revealed plans for a new skyscraper designed by Foster & Partners. This multi-billion dollar structure is expected to reach a staggering height of two kilometers, more than twice the height of the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, nearly four times the height of One World Trade Center in New York, the tallest in the US, and if laid flat, half the length of Central Park. Although the name, purpose, and design of the skyscraper remain undisclosed, it's anticipated to be built just north of Riyadh, near the proposed King Salman International Airport. Foster & Partners, a firm with a proven track record in Saudi Arabia, won the project over many competitors. The firm previously designed the Al Fasalya Tower, Saudi Arabia's first skyscraper in the early 2000s, several stations for the country's high-speed rail project, and will also lead the renovation of King Khalid International Airport. They also have experience with tall buildings elsewhere, like the nearly completed J.P. Morgan Chase Building in Manhattan. However, while very tall by most standards, the J.P. Morgan Chase Building will still be less than a quarter of the height of this newly proposed tower in Riyadh. Regardless of what we may think about Saudi Arabia's past, present, and future mega-projects, there are two critical questions. Can such a building even be built? And if so, is Saudi Arabia the right nation to do it? Let's start with the first question. Can a building like this be built regardless of who's behind it? The short answer is yes. According to the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat, there are no insurmountable technical barriers preventing the construction of a building up to a mile high or even taller. William Baker, a senior structural engineer who worked on the Burj Khalifa, said back in 2012 that structures twice the height of the Burj Khalifa should be feasible using the same design. We could easily do a kilometer, a mile, or probably even more. He also mentioned that other designs could also be effective. That being said, there are specific criteria that a building must meet to be recognized as the tallest. This caused major controversy in 1998 when the Patronus Towers were named the world's tallest buildings, despite having a roof that's 63 meters lower than that of the Willis Tower. The Patronus were taller than the roof of the Willis Tower, but only when measured from the top of their spires. The antennas of the Willis Tower were not taken into account, as antennas are not considered a structural element of the building, 
or what the council calls height to architectural top. Spires, on the other hand, are. To resolve these discrepancies, the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat now recognizes two additional height categories. Height to tip. The highest point of a building, irrespective of material or function of the highest element. Height to highest occupied floor. The finished floor level of the highest usable floor within the building. This excludes what the council calls vanity height. This measurement reflects the portion of a building's height that is not functional or accessible for its intended use. These criteria provide a more accurate comparison of skyscrapers and address the complexities of modern building measurements. However, since the new tower plans to crush the current record and not just surpass it by a few meters, it's safe to say that it won't have any issues meeting the council's criteria. Now, back to whether it's possible to build that high. Well, for skyscrapers reaching heights of two kilometers or more, the shape of the design becomes crucial. One design worth considering is using hollow-based structures similar to the design of the Eiffel Tower. This concept was once considered in the 1990s with the proposed XC4000 a skyscraper that aimed to reach the height of 4,000 meters. Dubai had a similar idea with its proposed 2,400-meter Dubai City Tower. Simple vertical columns like those used in Taipei 101 or the Twin Towers can only go so far. As height increases, swaying becomes a significant issue, and at 2,000 meters, a tall, slender structure might collapse due to stresses caused by the shifting weight on higher floors. Another potential solution for managing wind stress in extremely tall buildings is to design the tower in a way that allows wind to pass through, reducing strain on the structure. This design approach was proposed back in 2010 with the Sky Mile Tower in Tokyo, Japan, which aimed to reach approximately 1 mile or 1.6 kilometers in height. Similar to other mega-tall skyscrapers, the Sky Mile Tower's design features a tapered shape as it rises, which helps manage wind forces and reduce sway, improving the building's stability. Additionally, the design incorporates structures stacked on top of one another, creating gaps throughout the building. These gaps help distribute weight and stress more evenly, which addresses one of the key challenges of building high. Moreover, there are other ways to keep something tall and thin upright. In fact, some innovative architects have even looked to bridges for inspiration. One being Santiago Calatrava with his design of the Dubai Creek Tower. Initially planned to reach 1,300 meters, the tower's height was recently revised to be shorter than the Burj Khalifa. The design uses a system of tension cables to stabilize the structure. These cables are anchored at various points and provide extra support, particularly in high winds and seismic conditions. However, unlike other tall skyscrapers, Dubai Creek Tower is an observation tower with a relatively thin core. This cable design hasn't been considered for buildings with large central cores. It's also important to clarify that technically, 50% of a skyscraper's height must consist of usable floors and be freestanding to qualify as a building. That is why the CN Tower in Toronto and Tokyo Skytree, which ranks third on the tallest tower list, are usually omitted from height-based records because most of their height do not constitute habitable space and therefore don't qualify as buildings. So, if the firm opts for this cable design, it might risk the tower's classification as the world's tallest building. The strategy used in the Burj Khalifa, which involves stacking columns that support one another as they rise inward, is effective to a point. Eventually, the pressure on the building's midpoint compromises the structure. One alternative is to design a building with an enormous base, so large that the wind can't move it. But that presents its own set of challenges. Instead, a building of this scale would likely need sloping sides spread over a wide footprint, 
A hollow core could make this design more feasible by reducing the structure's overall weight and relieving stress on the framework. Beyond the technical challenges, there's the human element. How would people live and work effectively in such incredible heights? And what about the workforce needed to build it? For instance, a massive building would require an extensive elevator system possibly even segmented elevators that transport people in stages. As a building grows taller, bringing natural light to its core becomes more difficult. Transporting materials to higher and higher levels becomes increasingly complex and dangerous, depending on conditions faced by the construction team. Still, all of these issues are solvable with one powerful resource, money. And Saudi Arabia has plenty of it. $925 billion to be exact as of July 2024. And if the NEOM project, which is estimated to set the nation back $1.5 trillion, is scaled back, building this megatall skyscraper may be realistic from a financial standpoint. But the real question remains, is Saudi Arabia the right nation to take on such an ambitious project? With its wealth and passion for iconic architecture, you might think the answer is yes. Unfortunately, there's a catch. The Jeddah Tower. Announced over a decade ago, Jeddah Tower began construction back in 2013, aiming for a height of one kilometer, half the size of this new proposed tower. Progress was promising for a while, but since January 2018, construction has stalled due to the Saudi purge of 2017 and the global pandemic in 2020. Despite this, in 2023, Saudi Arabia began seeking new contractors to resume work on the tower. The kingdom once had a prime opportunity to build a landmark half the size of the new proposed tower. Yet, after 11 years, only an unfinished structure standing at a mere third of its intended height remains. If Saudi Arabia and its public investment fund genuinely intend to change course, there's still time. The line, a centerpiece of the NEOM project, has mostly been limited to earthworks, so a significant portion of the allocated funds remains unspent. If Saudi Arabia prioritizes completing the Jeddah Tower, scales back the line, and spreads out costs over several years, they could potentially finance the completion of the Jeddah Tower, the new two-kilometer tall skyscraper, and other smaller NEOM projects without straining their finances as severely as the line would if completed. As much as Saudi Arabia's approach to mega projects invites skepticism, there are realistic ways for the kingdom to fund awe-inspiring, record-breaking developments. While this may come across as toned down compared to other jaw-dropping projects proposed by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, it remains incredibly impressive. At this point, we can't definitively say what path this proposed mega tower will take, whether it will serve as a distraction, an alternative, or if Saudi Arabia truly believes it can bring every part of its vision to life. Nonetheless, as a fan of ambitious mega-projects, I can't deny that a two-kilometer high tower would be an extraordinary sight. Do you think a skyscraper this tall could really become a reality? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're curious about other groundbreaking projects, check out our video on the Mukab. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.